Hello, everyone. Sorry for the um, couple minutes uh, delay here. Apologies. Um, we're just getting ourselves ready here. Um, so we want to welcome you to our last webinar in our series for the D2 Life Sciences Solution. Um, today we will cover the electronic trial master file solution and um, also Happy New Year to all. I meant to say that. Um, wishing you all a good start to 2018. So, um, Frank, if you could um, share your slides for us, that would be great. Sure, I'm sharing now. You should be able to see it. Thank you, yeah. And you can go to uh, the next one, it's perfect. Okay, so today I'm Larissa Primavera. I'm the Director of Sales for um, our FME US group. And with me, I have Frank Dentrone, who's the President of FME US, and Pinal Shaw, who's one of our senior consultants for our team as well. So we welcome them today and thank them for their time. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, FME and who we are, and then um, dive into the OpenText T2 Life Sciences Electronic Trial Master File module. And then after that, we'll do a demonstration. So just um, a little bit of housekeeping today. You are in listen-only mode. Um, but if you do have questions at the end of the session, we, we welcome them. So you can direct them um, through the chat to the organizer and we'll be able to answer them accordingly for you. Um, the session today will be recorded and shared with you. Um, you can go back and review. And as a reminder, um, we did record all of our sessions of the four modules and you, you're welcome to watch those as well. So just a little bit about um, who FME is. We're your partner for digital transformation in life sciences and industrial manufacturing. Um, in the United States, and our team here, we focus uh, mainly in life sciences. We say more um, because we do core platform, um, elect the ECD product line as well, all around Documentum, so that, that product line. And we have a product called Migration Center, which is a um, to migrate content and metadata from different systems. So when we talk about the D2 Life Sciences module uh, migration center, um, also supports migrations to that as well. So um, just for your awareness. So we were founded in Germany in 1995. We have offices throughout Germany and also in Romania. We were founded in the United States in March of 2010. So that's just a very high level for you. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Frank. Sure. Thanks, Larissa, for the intro. And I'm going to just do a couple of slides, a little bit about FME for those who are new uh, to, to, to learning more about us. Um, so here's just a picture of our, our portfolio uh, in terms of full, you know, kind of start to finish services or cradle to grave is what I've used in the past in terms of uh, naming conventions or phrases is where we come in and can provide a variety of services across different fronts. Uh, I'm not going to go into any one in great length as the main essence of, of today is really to get into the ETMF module for, for the D2 Life Sciences Suite. But here you see we have different types of consulting services, operational so, and support services, migration services that Larissa had mentioned or alluded to around our migration product. And then we also provide um, technology deployment or eval support services and also training and assessment. So really a full kind of end-to-end -end portfolio around life science customers on the different types of initiatives that, that are typical within that type of operating environment. Next here, I just want to give a little indication in terms of the market around the, for the, the open text, the Documentum Life Science Suite portfolio, where you have um, just over the last uh, 25 years around content management platform, you know, open text is really leading the charge in, in the life sciences industry, having, you know, that you could see some metrics on the screen, top 10 pharmas, uh, also 95% or 50 pharmaceutical companies uh, using you know, the OpenText Documentum uh, platform and then 90% of the, of the top 10 biotech companies. So it's really good penetration in terms of the adoption rate in the portfolio, OpenText Documentum Life Science Suite portfolio. So just to give the folks on the, on the line some awareness of that. So here, as we usually do across uh, our, our webinar series, you know, we, we touch on, uh, I mentioned kind of the, just at a glance, the, the, the overall portfolio or suite itself, but we're gonna focus today on the clinical, the ETMF module. Uh, so it has a very unique set of uh, characteristics and capabilities. I'm gonna summarize those to, in, in the slides and then Pinal 
uh, will walk us through kind of a demo, some scenarios to give you a, a look at what the solution is. But I do have a key set of slides, some graphical representation of some reports and other capabilities that I want to, you know, that'll be available for those who aren't able to attend. And for those that are, you know, you get a glimpse at what that looks like, but the demo walkthrough will give you some additional awareness. So here we're going to talk about clinical trauma to follow. That's one module of the four. For those who haven't participated in the other uh, webinar series items, uh, we did cover each of these uh, and they're recorded. I think the, we're going to share links to them. Um, but this gives you a, a, a depiction of the platform where we sit in underneath in terms of our capabilities uh, at the bottom of the stack. And as you work up the stack, it starts to get more vertical in terms of business process, you know, ETMF being uh, one, one element of the, of the four pillars. So here, uh, we're just giving a solution overview. So at a glance, you know, out of the box behavior, it's really a fully electronic TMS solution. It provides the ability to, for your planning, you know, I would say planning, collecting, and, and tracking. And you'll see some screenshots and such and part of the demo in this area. There's a, a core set of uh, document taxonomy items that are founded on the DI, the, the TMF reference model, so based on industry best practice and standards from the business you know, community that are involved in those standards. Uh, there's a, a predefined business process configuration that's baked into the solution, that which you'll see in the demo, and in some cases, the screenshots that I'm going to share. And then there's a number of views, so different types of views uh, for roles, more, more, I would call it more role-based um, business process and role-based uh, capabilities in terms of the interface and the feature function for trial managers or clinic, the authors or review and approver or external parties such as inspectors, investigators, and CROs. So solution really covers a wide range of, of use cases in terms of the overall ETMF process. Uh, and I had some key indicate uh, key capabilities on the right hand side. You'll see, you know, automation. There's some automation which you'll see in the demo, uh, and some screenshots. I won't get into that in great length now. Different indexing or being able to index or tag metadata, tag documents uh, or multiple documents during the 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 when you're ingesting the data, the documents into the solution, a variety of reporting and dashboard capabilities, different types of granularity in terms of security model or security matrix as part of the platform and solution. And again, there's an out-of-the-box inspector workspace for auditing. You'll see, you know, you'll see that at a glance uh, in the screenshots and and potentially, I don't know if we're covering that in the demo itself, but I have some screenshots of that. And if there are customers that uh, have a need from a CTMS integration. Uh, that's possible as well, just so you have that awareness. So here, I'm just walking you through some screenshots. I'm going to spend, you know, a few seconds or so on what it is. And but again, we're here. We're really trying to, you know, work through the demo. That's where you'll get kind of that interactive experience with the, with the solution. But here you'll see, you know, kind of a completion report status. So based on site, so it gives you a visual indication on, you know, based on on what site. Uh, what's the status? So percentage. So it's a a, a visual, you know, color or graphic. So here you can see right away what site, what is the status, uh, what are the percentages? So that's just one example of of visibility uh, from a reporting perspective. Here you'll see. Oops, let me go back one. Here you'll see, you know, from a quality check, you know, as you're going through um, the indexing process and checking for documents that are in the TMF in the plan that are required. Uh, you'll hear, see at a visual, you know, which percentages of of what status. So you'll see scan quality, you see missing signatures, you see missing dates. Uh, so here, you, at again, at a glance, you can see where you are in terms of a quality metric. Another visual uh, TMF, so the missing documents report, which is very useful, where you can look at volume so you can see based on um, doc count by zone uh, and you'll see some metrics across the bottom central trial documents or data management etc you could see how many documents are missing uh, so you can start to take corrective measures or proactive measures to to fill those particular gaps so just again just showing you the value in terms of what's possible in the solution Here's another one, document status report. Again, different statuses across the documents that are brought into the solution. Uh, you have draft final or index and quality checks. So you have these different doc statuses that you can measure uh, through the reporting. So there's a really uh, powerful report matrix 
or reporting uh, capabilities within the solution. So here is looking at improving the quality. So and it, some screenshots around the, the, the TMF quality via the QC indexing process. Uh, and you'll see a bit of this in the demo. Here you'll see a visual on the screen. On the left panel, you'll see some documents that are in question. And then you have in the middle, you have your metadata indexing process that you can fill in the different uh, metadata attributes for that for the documents or one or many documents. And then on the right-hand side, you can get a, a glimpse at the content. So you can see it all of this holistically through one interface, through these different what we call widgets. These um, tabs with the blue background paneling is considered technically a widget, um, but it's a behavior. Uh, it's behavior for that particular um, widget itself. So it's just a visual to, to so you can see what that that experience looks like. And here you can see uh, I have my different quality check documents list on the left hand side. Again, you can look at the metadata and content and you'll see the, the status on the right where you have that quality check banner uh, watermarking across the content. So again, this is just depict um, what that lo experience looks like. ETMF, uh, ETMF uh, study planning. Uh, uh, here on the left-hand side, you'll see the different uh, foldering structure, which we'll kind of get a glimpse in the demo, uh, where you're looking at a particular uh, study, uh, of what phase it's in, uh, what country and site. And here you'll see, based on the file plan in the middle, you'll see documents that have a PDF um, icon. Those are the documents that are available. And then you have the ones with the little X uh, with the clear background icon, those are the ones that aren't there yet. So those are placeholders. A first glance at what's um, what documents are available and which ones are placeholders that are waiting uh, for content to be associated to that particular placeholder. Here's another glimpse at the inspector view. So they have a different login view or a screen interface read only. So they'll, they'll get a welcome screen. This is an out of the box screenshot, but this can be uh, branded to a particular business, um, you know, requirements. So it can be, you know, what it needs to be in terms of branding. This is out of the box. Here you'll see where you can look at documents. You could do document comparisons. So it has um, a, a benefit of what versions of documents um, between two different versions or between two different documents themselves. So you have that ability. Uh, I just want to share that with you um, on this particular example. And then the OCR, ETMF document capture, the OCR process. And this is through a solution which we're not going to be able to demo today, but I want you to have the awareness. That's why I included it in the slides. Snap, it's a it's a cloud. Uh, it's based on the Leap platform provided by OpenText. Uh, this is where you can have a uh, cloud-based uh, web experience where you can bring, expose this interface to external parties or, or, or resources that are working on data capture, bringing documents into the solution. Uh, and there's a workflow and process around this where you can bring the content in and auto classify in many respects where you're looking for key pieces of metadata that can be pulled off that content and tagged. And in the end, this information would be brought into your ETMF solution on on-prem or, or potentially in the cloud. Uh, but it's a, I just want to show you that, that ingestion process that, that's available through the SNAP uh, document capture um, technology. Investigator portal, again, similar as the courier application through the Leap platform. So here's another visual uh, where you can get a glimpse at the trial and, and you can see what's pending, what's in review. So you get a, a status dashboard and uh, you can get that visual uh, aspect of completion that you can see in the middle of the screen. Again, this is through the Leap uh, cloud-based technology uh, provided by OpenText, uh, and this is the courier uh, mechanism. Another uh, for Doc Exchange. Again, uh, another web experience where you can see your thumbnailing status. You can do it by site. Uh, there's a different categorization that you can see on the screen: zero one site selection or zero two site setup. And you have different documents that are associated with metadata, and there's a status as well. On, and you can see on the right corner, there's different folios that are available as well. And then here, document preview. So you can have uh, a select a document, preview it here through the browser, and you'll have different um, metadata associated or commentary on the right-hand side. And then there's a mobility offering. Again, I just wanted to bring awareness. Uh, so you can see you know, the, the new trending technology. So here's another visual 
aspect from a mobile device where you have that web experience on your device. You have your folders, you can have searching, and you can view content. Uh, so there's a number of characteristics that are available through you through the, that mobile experience, uh, leveraging this, this solution set. And here, uh, there's a, an approval process, a workflow approval as well that's supported on the device. Um, and this is just giving you a visual of uh, what that looks like, what that experience would look like. And then just a brief uh, summary, and then we'll jump into the demo. Uh, we have, you know, clinical trial manager. So we have this, or sponsor, you have improved TMF completeness. You have that improved TMF quality, you know, from a clinical research or CRA uh, perspective, you have your uh, contract research org and a CRO, improve productivity and reduce training. And then from an investigator vantage point, you have that improved collaboration and improved TMF, you know, timelines, you know, overall. And I just wanted to drop in one slide here. I'm going to skip forward. Yep, let me just wanted to make sure it was fully uh, expanded out. So here, as we mentioned in our migration point that was made earlier in the beginning of this webinar, you know, our solution set at FME in terms of migration, we have the ability to customers that want are embracing what I've expressed for ETMF or for the solution itself, you know, the Q&M or R&D or SSV, we have uh, migration capabilities where we can help customers accelerate that kind of time to value in terms of consolidation. If you're looking to, you know, retire some legacy applications and bring them over to the life sciences suite, we have that accelerator solution with Migration Center and our and our subject matter experts that can can make that happen. So I'll leave that thought with the, with the group here, and we can also follow up on that if anyone has any questions around data migration. And with that, I'm going to hand over uh, the next segment of the webinar to Pinal, and he'll walk us through some scenarios in terms of uh, ETMF. So we'll do a little demo. So I think I need to give you, uh, or I think we're going to give it to you now. I think you have it, Pinal. Yeah. Hi, Frank. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. Uh, can you see my screen, Frank? Yes, I can see it. Yep. Okay, so uh, as Frank explained to everyone that uh, we are using this Documentum Life Science Solutions for uh, uh, managing all the trials, and uh, I'm going to demo about uh, how the file plan uh, you can design for your uh, trial on how you can specify site-based and country-based uh, template and how to indexing the document and quality uh, quality checking documents review approve workflow and how to import the placeholder documents uh, during the trial so this is uh, as mentioned by frank that uh, this screen will be different for each user depending on the role they are in so i'm logged in as trial manager that's why i'm getting this screen so if once i log in uh, as a Review and approver screen might be a little bit different uh, that we will look into it. Uh, here we have tabs like browse, index, dashboard, and everything. So this dashboard is whatever the report Frank was showing on his screen, uh, and we will look into it later. So before we start, right, I logged in as a trial manager who is the sponsor of the trial. And the first thing, the, the trial manager design like product manager has already product on which we are going to set the trial so product is already specified by the product manager and the trial manager will start the trial but before they start the trial they need to set up the template right what kind of template they want and what kind of document this trial is going to uh, collect so I'm going to show you how to import it, but this is the trial sample document, right? And here is the schema. The second tab is schema, and the first tab is the file plan. And the schema contains all the artifact names, uh, what are the documents that you are going to import. And here we have, like, we specify whether this document is required, recommended, optional, not required, product, country, and site, depending on the scope this document is required or not these are the labels these are the standard schema we are using to import the document 
So in file plan, now you can see all this stuff is coming from the schema under this Excel. And this is just a sample. I'm just going to show you how it is going to look. But you can specify according to your requirement. We have a lot of documents, but you can specify with less document. You can specify which style you want. Right, so to import the template, once you log in as this uh, TMF uh, trial manager, when you create new content, you'll be able to see this trial management and here template file plan you have to import. I'm not going to import right now, but uh, you can import this file plan. I can import, so trial, then we can say demo. So these are the uh, reference model, DIA reference model, TMF 2.0 and 3.0. So latest is 3.0, so we are selecting 3.0, but if you have old documentation, you can definitely select based on 2.0 as well. So this template are you will get the selection to include the template, but this template can be imported from the D2 config. Right, so once the demo is here, so I forgot to provide this. So here we have the form info. Here you can specify who is the author, reviewers, approvers, readers for this file plan. And this is the access control who has which permission and the maximum activation level you can specify based on product trial country and site we will cover all this in few minutes so right now this is only for the trial and after that you once the file plan is reviewed and everything is done you can activate this plan then only it will be available to use when you are going to start the trial So to start the trial, so we have to create the registration form based on the right, so here the reference model and you can specify the group uh, subgroup group and subgroup depending on that this will be available right so this is configurable in the taxonomy. Uh, we can configure it uh, based on the requirement of the customer. So let's select this. So once you select, uh, if you have a file plan, you need to enable this enable TMF planning to true. And here we are going to select this TMF collection list, IBU, and say study phase one. Right here is the trial info. This is mandatory field uh, which we need to put. You need to, you can provide this information depending on your product. Here is same the access control user group and trial master file. When you select the trial, this will be also same, but here you specify which trial uh, activation level you want for this trial. Right, so depending on the auto link uh, rule configuration, the clinical trial will be under IBU phase one, one, one. You can, as you know, there can be a multiple trials on a multiple site, can, you can uh, start. So here there is a possibility, availability to uh, select multiple uh, trial for the same site. So it will go under product, then phase, and whatever the trial identification number, you have this trial. So once the trial is created, the first thing, so we already selected here the file plan for this file plan template, right? So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to load the file plan. So what it will do is it is going to create the whole folder structure with the placeholder under clinical IBU, uh, the clinical trial number, and it will create the whole folder structure here. It is not there right now, but it is going to create. 
when we activate the uh, trial. So here we are. So file plan is loaded. Let me show the status. Yes, yeah, so planning. So now I'm going to activate this plan. Right, so once you activate it, it is going to create the whole folder structure under clinical. So you can see it is initializing now. It will take some time and active now. Yeah, so you can see this whole folder structure now getting created here. Depending whatever we have specified in the template, right? And so these are the placeholder documents we can say. So for this trial, it is going to show you what document you need to import. Right, so if you want to import the document for this placeholder, you can. So you can log in as an author. So author once. Yeah, let me show you. So under this. So right now, if I log in as a TMF author. I won't be able to see TMF. Username is TMF. So you can see author has a different workspace than what uh, TMF coordinator can see. But now if I go here under clinical. Yeah, so author won't be able to see any placeholder until uh, trial manager is going to set up trial setup completed, right? So here, depending on this current stage, you will be able to see the status here it will be in a bracket trial setup right so now if i log in as this they should be able to see the all the placeholder document so that they can import so we will use the same user right now to import the document right so you can select this document or you can select multiple document and you can import uh, you can import multi multiple files drag and drop everything is uh, possible right so you can select multiple files from here as well but i have to import pdf so that i can preview so let me select this I know there is a PDF. So you can drag and drop from here to here. Right, so that will be covered. And you can select multiple files here. I'm going to show you how the during index time you can select which placeholder, but now at least we know we have selected, sorry, sorry, we have selected for this file note. So there is a placeholder. But if you select multiple, then you can uh, select uh, document during the indexing. Yeah. 
So right now, if you go to this indexing tab after this, so as soon as you import the document, it will go into the staging area. And here you will be able to see this document. And depending on your role, you will be able to uh, finalize the document. So here you can see right now you have to this is mandatory field you need to assign placeholder if you want to change you can remove it and you can change it. Right so here signature date. Let me put like this. Right so if you want to change anything you can verify this information and save it. So now when you save from indexing it will go away because it is already done and if this document is part of the quality check it will go under quality uh, QC review otherwise it will become final. Yeah so this if you go to browse now so it will go to this folder here wherever it was. Yeah, you can see this. So you can see this as this is a quality kind of document. Uh, there, there should it should be uh, reviewed by another user before we make it final, right? So when the any technical uh, TMF uh, QC Tech One or business user is going to log in, they have this access and they can review the document and make it final. So TMF underscore. So we I have this user uh, who has uh, this permission. So you can see this for this user it will be you, how many document he has in the quality check. Right, so you can directly click from here and you can see which documents are for him he need to review. Right, so for us, I think it was the first document uh, for our trial 111, right, IBU 111 phase one. So he can review here and he can acquire for QC. and he can accept after that. So pass quality check. So this is kind of a quick workflow automatically set for those kind of document. So any questions so far for this trial before we move to. So now this document is final, right? And now if we look at the report for this, dashboard so let's go for the trial yeah. right so these are the these reports are available uh, it's a third party but integrated with life science solution they are from Mplexer right and here you will be able to see different reports uh the you have already seen this uh, frank was showing during his demo so here how many documents are needed how many documents are already in a final state you will be able to see that here so missing document for trial so you can see what kind of document are missing right now Right, so these are the different different report uh, you will be able to see on. Uh, right, so they, all, all these reports are available out of the box uh, once you uh, enable the license for the Mplexer and you'll be able to see all these reports. Like there are some documents which require different kind of workflow. Let me uh, so those documents you will be able to. So I think it is so meeting general document. I'm importing this.
No, I import as this user. That's it. Yeah, they don't have index here. I import as a by mistake. I imported as a wrong user. Yeah, that's why we are not able to see it here. Yeah, so it will go on again in the staging area, then you can come here. And so everything is good. If everything looks good, you can save it. There are no mandatory fields. Right, so this document is a draft state and to make it approved and all this stuff, you have to uh, start the workflow. You can specify review approval, so submit for approval. And it is, I'm just selecting this user, so it will route through the workflow, the way workflow works in R&D document and uh, Q&M, uh, this is R&D. So for those crossover document, you will be able to start the workflow. I'm going to explain about that crossover document and whatever you will be able to see here. So this document will route to the workflow. It will be going in a different state once the approver approve it. But this is how uh, this is standard process for the workflow. And then this document will become uh, final at this stage, right? And if this document, like suppose this document is a part of uh, R&D, so that's why you will be able to assign this regulatory form. Oh, it's only to the crossover document. So if the document, any document in this is part of the R&D and you have R&D solution installed, you will be able to associate the regulatory application form number on this uh, document. You can share, you can uh, share this document. It applies to, uh, so right now we did not have site, but if the document is there and you want to share it with other site, you'll be able to share with the other site. So there are some stuff that you can do here, especially for this crossover document and you can assign to study right now. We don't have any study assigned, but product level, but you will be able to do this. So there are different, different uh, life cycle action available depending on the document if part of. Uh, Frank, do you want to add anything here on this uh, crossover document and uh, this study? <clears throat> yeah, I th yeah, I think you mentioned it briefly, but yeah, there's the crossover documents that there's a there's a list of, or a document inventory list, you know, a set of artifacts is what we would call it, but documents, if you will, document types <clears throat> that are, you know, in the TMF that are typically provided in a, in a regulatory activity or a submission um, to an agency. And those would be considered crossover documents. And in many cases, uh, well, the way the solution works, like you said, Pinal, if you have licensed both modules, um, the ETMF and the R&D module, then the solution is an engineered to link documents into into both places so you'll create a document once but it'll link it into the trial master file cat foldering structure and it'll also link it into the regulatory cabinet so it provides that visibility in the foldering mechanism uh, to the regulatory uh, personnel so so you covered it um, but I just added a little more detail yeah. behind that yeah so other other different things you can do on the on uh, trial is like you can log the trial, you can roll it. So suppose you want to add some more files, you can go and you can edit the template and you can reload the file plan. It will automatically add those new documents. Once you reload or refresh, it will automatically load all the new stuff uh, to the 
plan or it will remove those documents from the plan depending on whatever changes you made you can manage the external plans participant as uh, it is for the inspector who is going to uh, do so you will be able to set up the external participant based on the role here on the when the trial is set up right you can associate this trial to the secondary product if you want and uh, you can update and view the progress so whenever this uh, you do this it will it should prompt one second it will come yeah so here it will show you how many documents you need right current stage expected document 115 i it is showing 15 because i did not add any document which are mandatory right all stages completed document minus one extra document one i have added missing 27 documents so you'll be able to see that report even if you don't have this amplexer license you'll be able to see if the trial has all the required information there or not another thing like you can decide that okay i don't want to right now nobody can import the document i want to lock the trial for doing something i'm waiting on something so you can lock the trial so when you lock the trial what will happen to the file here everything will be locked and user won't be able to do anything on this document right so when you unlock the trial it will available to import the document back right so now solid unlock now right so now if you decide this trial is you want to uh, specify trial for the uh, you can initiate the trial for the different countries or different site within the same countries you can configure this uh, template uh, or the site based template and the country based template right and once it is done then you can go here because we are i think we don't have much time so that's why i'm just going to explain this thing uh, you can create this site registration from the, the country and you can specify which region you want and here one 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 and here you can specify country level plan if you want if you don't if you want only for the site level plan site means within australia you can have trial at the multiple location then you can do it at the site level if it is not then you can specify at the country level and Right, so within your within your trial, you'll be able to see that uh, there's a country level plan also started, right? You can exactly set like your update view progress summary here. You can set the status. Right now, we haven't done anything, but this kind of if the trial is active, it will automatically be active. Right, and when you refresh this trial, it should automatically refresh trial when here refresh the trial and if the country and site is set up basically it will create the same folder structure under your uh, so you can see it will create this folder structure like this depending on your trial setup what document extra needed for this setup so it will do the same thing and then you can import those document index or document and go ahead from here but depending on your site and everything it will create the new folder structure under the same plan right and I explain about the external participant so i think i have covered everything for this uh, frank uh, if anybody has yeah. any question, then I can definitely demo that. But as we don't have much time left for the uh, question answer, that's why I'm not importing this. But it is the idea of you can have the file plan based on site and countries, and mm -hmm. you'll be able to import. And it will automatically create the placeholder documents, and then it works the same way it worked for simple trial. Yeah, I would say for now we got like 10 minutes. So to be sensitive to everyone's time, we should um, move forward with some questions. And you know, if any, if we can't cover everything, and if there's more questions, of course, 
that people are thinking about after the session they can always uh, i think our contact information will be presented and uh, they you know whomever's on the on the webinar certainly can reach out to us uh, directly and we could field any additional questions that we may not be able to field today uh, in this session so so larissa i would say um you know i'll take it back over or someone can pass the ball back to me mm -hmm. and then i'll share my screen which is more kind of on the wrap-up aspect and hopefully you can see my screen do you see my screen larissa yeah. yep yeah. you're gonna see it yeah. okay so so yeah we'll i'll hand it over to you so we want to solicit some questions and and then we'll we'll try to wrap it up for the day for this session yeah sure so um as frank mentioned if you have any questions you can feel free and um put them in the chat um and we'll be able to answer them for you uh, frank i think we have one there already um, mm -hmm. But we did want to mention our um, series itself. So if you can jump to the next slide, we um, had mentioned that we did a series for all of the solutions, all four, um, and they are available uh, in recordings and this one will be as well. So we will be sending an email out um, with all of the links to the recordings um, soon. So um, folks can go back and view them or if they missed it, they can see them. So that will be coming uh, from FME. And then um, we can be contacted, as Frank said, directly. I think some of you might know us and uh, feel free and email us directly or um, to info at fme-us.com. So we will get to the questions. So let me just check them here. So the first one is how do we incorporate our clinical trial information into this solution? Yeah, so I think that question is probably, you know, like trial information or the metadata. I and mean, there's a number, there's a number of data elements, um, you know, for the for trial for the TMF. Um, so there's a registration form. So you'll see that uh, there's that clinical trial form that uh, was demoed. I think we, had, I don't know if I had a screenshot of that, but there's behind that form, there's a variety of pick lists or dictionaries that are are founded for that form. Um, there's uh, a business admin layer. So there's a role, like a business administrator role that empowers kind of a SME or a business admin that can manage those dictionaries, those lists of values. Uh, so that's for one. And then secondly, there's the possibility to, to there's connector technology between like a CTMS solution. Uh, if you have a CTMS solution that you want to integrate you know key metadata you know trial information with this solution so there's a number of ways to kind of bridge those that that information over um, one is you can just onboard it directly into the solution or there's that connector ctms connector capability great thank you um, there's another one here you mentioned roles in the solution so how do we handle our external partner access yeah, that's, that always comes up, especially when you talk about ETMF solutions. Um, so yeah, there's that's why I sh we showed uh, that that leap or that um, in the screenshots, which uh, this is recorded. So for those, you know, you can reflect back on the recording. Uh, there's uh, the ability to onboard. You know, there's still a, a named user. There's a way to onboard those external parties and provide them access through the through that leap. You know the life science suite has a uh, a leap a life science express solution set where you can expose that experience to those external parties. So in the screenshots I shared is you know ex shows what that experience looks like, uh, and then it's just an onboarding you know process to get people an account registered into the into the platform, and then they would have access you know, to do the things that you can imagine those external parties need to do in terms of bringing content in and, and things of that nature. Great, thanks Frank. Um, you mentioned a migration product. Um, can you tell me more about this and any experience migrating to this solution? Yeah, I mean, that's a major lane for us here at FME. Um, done so many migrations uh, across the board, <laughs> you can imagine, uh, but more directly to the question. So yeah, we've, migrated customers from a variety of places, uh, source locations uh, to the suite. Uh, so Migration Center, which is our product, has different adapter paths, what we call pathways uh, from different ECM system sources to, to this platform. 
Uh, so we're able to, you know, collect the data, you know, content and metadata from a source repository, um, bring it into our migration center environment, and then typically we work with, depending on where you're coming from, it may be, let's say, heavily structured in a good way, um, or it may not be. Uh, it might be partly structured in terms of metadata and, and what we've done through our methodology and through our tools set is work with the customer, work through their data, identify data gaps, because in many cases there are, uh, identify enrichment requirements. So, you know, documents that aren't metadata tagged appropriately, you know, we have a methodology and process where those can be tagged with business input. And then we can ingest that enrichment into the migration center process. And then we can push it into, you know, through the flow in migration center into the life sciences suite. So we have a, the target adapter, it's a D2 adapter that understands, you know, the D2 life science suite. So we, we configure Migration Center to um, push that data into the life sciences suite in, in the way in which it needs it. Uh, so partly methodology, dominantly technology, um, but there is a process for data enrichment. I mean, that's something that we do um, time and time again uh, with customers. Dep again, it depends on where you're coming from, how much that enrichment um, process is needed. Uh, again, it depends, but at the end of the day, we're able to do it um, and bring it. The Migration Center supports that process to get the documentation put into the life sciences suite in, in the way it needs it. And we could do a demo for those who want to see more about that. Uh, let us know and we can certainly provide a, a tailored demo from a, from a migration point of view. Okay, and we did have a couple more come in, Frank. Um, so we do have a few minutes, so we'll take these for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have others, please put them in. Um, so how is this solution provided? Is it um, SaaS leased? Is FME a reseller or do we have to lease directly from open text? So, we, so we're a partner. Uh, we are a legitimate uh, partner of open text. So we can A, resell. We have yet, we've done it and have that ability. Um, so that's not a problem. Uh, there are ways to purchase versus subscription-based, like SaaS subscription. It would be more subscription, just to be clear. Um, so there are both options in terms of technology, and uh, FME is able to to sell, you know, resell the the suite, you know, the software, um, and and the implementation, uh, which is obviously what we would be after as well. But um, it depends on the customer's needs. Thank you. And are you able to provide us with a two to three year product roadmap from Open Text? Uh, we could. It probably will have disclaimers, of course, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. safe harbor clauses, as everyone's aware, you know. But yeah, I mean, we're in tune with, you know, very close relationship with Open Text uh, and the portfolio. Um, and so we can, the answer would be yes. Uh, I don't know about two years. I mean, we could share what's available to partners you know so we certainly can the answer would be yes uh and the second my question would be just let us know and and we can set up you know a briefing on the roadmap and what's coming and what's available in 4.3 what's coming in the next release which is technically 16.4 so they're harmonizing the versions as for mm -hmm. those who are you know coming from the documentum you know have a long heritage and documentum platform we're all familiar with, you know, Documentum, you know, four, five, six, seven. Um, the new, you know, coming in, I think, end of February, I want to say. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's February and April. I mean, there's different versions being released, but they're consolidating the platform in terms of version numbering. So the suite uh, will be called 16.4, I believe. Don't hold me to that. Uh, but they're definitely, you know, harmonizing the way the platform versioning uh, but for all of us that are coming from the documentum um, uh, part of the house, uh, historically, it's basically 7.3 is what's there now, and then the next version will be called 16.4. Yeah, for every product, uh, the new version start from 16.4. So it will be streamlined with uh, whatever open text versioning system at this time. Right, they're harmonizing the portfolio yeah. for naming conventions it, It's to, to reduce any potential confusion it's it just it makes sense okay 
Thank you. Um, I guess we've hit 12 o'clock, um, so we'll conclude the Q&A session. Um, again, That's as right. Frank mentioned, yep. It's right, uh, right on the dot. <laughs> right on the dot. Good job, guys. Good timing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we will uh, conclude. So thank you, everybody, for joining us, and thank you, Pinal and Frank, for your time. We really appreciate it. Sure, no problem. Thanks, Larissa, and thanks to everyone who participated and looking forward to any questions or feedback you may have.